Christ, are you? No. You know the rules of the late, late home. <laughs> Newt, you and Tessie's been married nearly 30 years, ain't you? Well, you might as well get some enjoyment out of this. <laughs> Floyd. Say, you two ain't had a fight, have you? Of course not. <laughs> well, it's sure nice to see our plout getting along with the Bradley. Kate and your ma, Dan, ought to take peace lessons from you two young'uns. Why, every time they get together, why, they... Harvey! <laughs> you two ain't secretly engaged, are you? What makes you ask that? Well, if you was, you'd be entitled to put your arm around Billy Joe. <laughs> You don't think Floyd suspects anything, do you, Billy Joe? I don't think so. We've been pretty careful. I sure don't like this sneaking around just to keep my mother from finding out who I'm going out with. Dan, now, I'm not complaining. I'll show you something. <gasps> the ring! Oh, it's beautiful. Look at the engraving. From Dan with love. <gasps> oh, Dan, you're so sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna have the wedding date engraved in it, too, right after the ceremony. You wanna try it on? It won't be bad luck? Of course not. you to do your hollering in a more orderly fashion. <laughs> Chair recognizes Maggie Corton. Ladies of the every other Wednesday afternoon discussion. Tongue stick to the roof of your mouth. It's your roof. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than a doubting dog. No. The next item on the agenda is um, finding culture in books. Uh, this week we're going to hear an interesting review from Selma Plum. What book are you reviewing, Selma? The same one I've been trying to review the last three meetings. Dr. Holbein's Vegetable Gardening on a Budget. Well, snap it up. The cannonball's almost due. Did you hear something? The train coming? I didn't hear no whistle. Well, if it is, you ain't gonna be able to announce it with a mouthful of peanut butter. <laughs> Dr. Holbein State. <coughs> oh, uh, excuse me, Selma. Uh, yes, Uncle Joe? I thought you ladies would like to know. <coughs> oh, the train's in, ladies. <laughs> oh, Uncle Joe, what were you going to tell the ladies? Nothing. <laughs> Who unstuck your big mouth? <laughs> uh, sorry, Selma, we'll have to postpone your review till the next meeting. Now, we will now adjourn. Just a second, Kate Bradley. Before we do any adjourning, I've got something to say. But, Selma, you... I'm sick and tired of being cut off every other week right in the middle of my book review just because a train comes in. But you wouldn't want to keep Floyd and Charlie waiting. They make a special trip out here to pick up you girls. You wouldn't have to if we was to hold the meetings in my house instead of out here. But the bylaws state that the meetings are to be held at the house of whoever's Madam Chairwoman. Yeah, and Kate's been Madam Chairwoman ever since we formed the club. Then I say it's about time we change the Madam Chairwoman and the meeting place. Selma, if you would like to elect somebody else, that is your right. You don't have to tell me my rights. I'm sick and tired of you lording over the meetings, pounding that gavel at us, serving us them same stale peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Now, hold on, Selma Plout. 
If you don't like the way I run the meetings, that's one thing. But don't you knock what I said on my table. Why, Kate sets the best table in the whole valley. That's a matter of opinion. Anytime you want, I'll cook you recipe for recipe and spot you two pounds of bicarb of soda. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Girls, why don't we discuss this at the next meeting? As far as I'm concerned, there isn't going to be one. Meeting and club adjourned. <laughs> Mom. Oh, thanks, girls. I guess you won't be needing us anymore. Oh, I guess I will. <laughs> you two dry and I'll wash. How come Bobby Joe got out of helping? She has to study for an algebra test tomorrow. Oh, well, I got a test tomorrow, too. And what? Jim? <laughs> Drying be just the thing to tone up your muscles. <laughs> now, why don't you dry the whole thing? Division of labor. There are two of us. I dry the bottom. You dry the top. Come on, Betty Jo. Quit fooling around. I've got a date. Oh, who with? Dan Plout. Plout? Oh, you said a naughty word. Oh, no. Just because Selma and I have been at arguing for 17 years doesn't mean I have anything against Dan. It's just too bad she's his mother. I've been going out with him for over a month now. Giving up all your other boyfriends? Look, if you think... How can you be so cruel? All those poor boys pining away for your companionship. Now, see here, infant. Infant? Betty, your bottom's wet. <laughs> no, I think Dan's a very nice boy. I don't have any objections to your going out with him at all. Neither do I. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll tell Dan. And if he wants to marry you, you kids have our blessing. Right, Mom? Well, I think I'll reserve judgment till the time comes. Mom doesn't want to face the possibility of being kin to Mrs. Plout. Well, it isn't the most pleasant thought. It's just like Romeo and Juliet, the Montagues and the Capulets. A couple of new families moved into the valley. <laughs> it's a famous love story, Uncle Joe. Romeo and Juliet were in love and wanted to get married, but their families were feuding. What'd they do, elope? They committed suicide. None of them foreign pictures have a happy ending. Your mom won't let you marry Dan. Why don't you have him get a ladder and put it up to your window and elope? Thanks for the advice. That's all right. If you need any help on any other problem, just call on your old Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe, um, Betty Joe and I do have a serious problem. What's that? Well, we can't seem to agree on the best way to dry those dishes. Do you think you could show us? Sure. You just put the towel in your left hand. Take the dish in your right hand and you dry the top first, and then you can... <laughs> I knew all the time they just wanted to dry the dishes for them. Then dry them. <laughs> you know, Uncle Joe, Billy's reached the age where marriage is more than a passing thought. And I don't think it's a good idea putting ideas in her head about eloping. Well, she ain't got much choice the way you feel about Selma Plow. What gives you the idea that Billy Joe is going to be marrying Dan? What gives you the idea she ain't? Oh, that's just a lot of foolishness. Sure. <laughs> Ready for another dish. You know something I don't know? Depends on what you don't know that I know. <laughs> if Billy Joe were planning to marry Dan, I'd be the first to know. Then how come you don't? What? Ain't you noticed the signs? What signs? Ever since Billy's been going out regularly with Dan, her appetite's been dropping off to nothing. That can only mean one thing. She's in love. She's been in love before, and she's eaten like a horse. I know, but this proves it's a real thing. Ah. Have you noticed how she stares off into space and acts absent-minded and can't remember where she put things? Billy Joe? She never forgot a thing in her life. Mom? Do you know where my earrings are? <laughs> yeah, they're on your ears. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Yeah, the next surefire sign I've is... done that same thing myself many times. Doesn't mean anything. All right, then we'll examine the party of the second part, Dan Plout. Have you noticed how he holds the coach when Billy and he goes out? Or how he opens the door for her? Well, he's just being polite. Kate... Those are the kind of thoughty things a fella does before he's married that his wife complains that he don't do after he's married. You're just trying to twist things around to prove something that isn't even a possibility. Maybe it ain't, but if I was you, I'd make up with Selma and keep peace with Billy Joe's future in-law. 
If Billy Joe had any idea of marrying Dan, I would make up with Selma, but she hasn't. Kate, hey, when Bill was courting you, uh, did he ever do any little special things to ingratiate himself with your father? Yeah. He used to bring him cigars. <laughs> you got a light? <laughs> Very becoming to you. Huh. You know, Selma, I've been thinking about what you said at the last meeting, and you're right. I have been chairwoman too long. You certainly have. <laughs> and confidentially, about those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches of mine, they're not very good. They certainly ain't. Well, afternoon, ladies. Which of you is first? Well, I was here before Selma, but you can go ahead and wait on her, Sam. I beg your pardon, but I was here before you. Why, when I was coming through the door, you were half where she was well, here before me. Well, don't do me no favors. I'm not doing you any favors. You said you were here before me, and I'm taking your word for it. Are you inferring I'm fibbing? I'm not inferring. I'm saying. <laughs> ladies, ladies, there's no problem. I I'll wait on both of you. Now, what'll it be, Kate? A can of pineapple. Large or small? Small. I'll take a large can and a pound of sugar. I'll take five pounds of sugar. Five pounds. And a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> One bottle Dr. Smith's stomach soother. <laughs> uh, a pound of sugar. You already ordered five pounds. We'll make it ten. I'll take twenty. I'll see your twenty and raise you a fifty-pound sack. <laughs> Business sure picks up when you ladies are on the outs. Anything else, Kate? No, thank you. Just... Put it on my bill. I'll pay cash. <laughs> Some people have more money than brains. Now, see here, Kate. Now, now ladies, I... please, you've been bickering for 17 years. It's about time you shook hands and made up. Oh, come on. Well, I'm not one to hold a grudge, Selma Plout, so if you're willing to apologize, I'm willing to accept it. <laughs> apologize? There you are, Kate. She apologized. I did no such thing. If there's any apologizing to be done around here, she's the one that's going to do it. That'll be the day. Well, all the stubborn, Sam. I'll be back later. I'll never speak to her again, even if my Billy Joe does marry her Dan. Billy Joe and Dan getting married? Joe and Dan? Yeah, of course it didn't surprise me. I've seen it coming for a long time now. Well, they certainly have kept it a secret. No secret to me. Dan asked my permission months ago. Been bringing me cigars ever since. How does Kate feel about it? How do I feel about it? I don't believe it. Kate, you gotta face the facts. Billy Joe would not do a thing like this behind my back. It's the story of Romeo and Juliet. You see, these two kids wanted to get married, and their families was a feud. It's not true. Well, ask Betty Jo. You mean she knows about Billy and Dan? No, about Romeo and Juliet. You heard her tell them. <laughs> well, all I know is if they're planning to get married, and I'm not admitting they are, by law they have to get my permission before Billy Jo can get a license. That's right. Of course, that law don't apply in this county. Well, when she was thinking about getting a driver's license, she had to get my permission. They ain't as strict about driving licenses. Trains it. How come that four-footed flea factory lets you announce the trains, and every time I try it, he... Train in? Yes, didn't you hear Uncle Joe barking? Howdy, <laughs> Flora. Hi. Charlie said for you to come down to the train and say hello. I got a note here from Dan for you, Billy Joe. Now, what did I do with it? I know I put it somewhere, don't, don't it? I can't remember. Floyd, is that it? Oh, yeah. Hold the train, Floyd. I've got to go into town with you. Well, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, Mom, nothing. Wonder what was in that note to get her so stirred up. Well, let's see. It said, 
must talk to you at once about you-know-what love. You-know-what? Floyd, you had no right to read Billy Joe's secret love letter. Well, it wasn't sealed, so I didn't think it was secret. If it was, you couldn't have kept it. I can keep a secret better than you can, Joe Carson. What secret did you ever keep? Well, I never said nothing about Dan trying the wedding ring on Billy Joe's finger that night. Wedding ring? Wild horses couldn't have drugged that out of me. <laughs> Billy Joe, I gotta talk to you. I can't now, Mom. I gotta go to town. And I won't be home for supper. Come on, Floyd. Billy Joe! Well, Kate, what do you say now? I'll do my saying to Billy Joe when she gets home tonight. <laughs> chance on waiting. Mr. Drucker knows something. You should have heard him dropping all sorts of not-too-subtle hints like how he performs discount weddings for his friends and <laughs> how his licenses have rosebuds painted on them. But he didn't come right out and ask you if you were going to I get... I didn't give him a chance. But he's liable to say something to my mother and that'll be the end of everything. And that's why I think the wedding should be moved up. Well, I think tomorrow would be a perfect day for it. You riding out with Billy Joe, Dan? Listen, you don't have to ride back with me. We have to get up pretty early. Okay. I'll see you at 5 a.m. sharp. Okay. She can be a bridesmaid. Where else? Sam! Sam! Open up! Open up! Come on, Uncle Joe. Kate, what's the matter? Did you marry anybody this morning? Well, who'd have me? Mr. Sam, this is serious. Billy Joe has run off with Dan. Well, she didn't even come to me. Well, I'll never forgive her for that. Well, if they didn't come here, where would they go? Uh, probably Will Quigley and Pixley. Then will you call Will and see if he's married them? Oh, sure. Come on in. Oh, those foolish kids. I just hope we're not too late. Come on, Sarah, answer. She's probably asleep behind the switchboard. <laughs> that banana goes in your bill. <laughs> Look, I was invited in. I'm a guest. Well, Joe, if you want to do something, why don't you go and get Selma Plout? What for? Because she should know about this, too. H uh, hello. Uh, Sarah, is that you? Well, it don't sound like you. Well, put them in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's better. Now you sound like you. Oh, uh, uh, Sarah, uh, could you get me Will Quigley in Pixley? Uh, area code? Uh, no, I don't. You know the area code for Pixley? No, we don't. 
Uh, uh, Kate. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell her. Uh, Sarah says hello. Sam, please. Oh, uh, uh, Sarah, this is kind of an emergency. No, 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 I don't want the fire department. This is official justice of the peace business. But you'll find out when you listen in. If we take in the hand car, we could be talking to Will in person by now. Uh, hello, Will? The Sam Drucker over at Hooterville. Oh, fine. What? Oh, well, it gives me a little twinge now and then, but when the weather's like this... Oh, beautiful. Sam, the temperature... could you give him the weather report later? Uh, uh, Will, the reason I called is on official business. Uh, did you perform any marriage ceremonies this morning? Uh, marriage ceremonies. Marriage... Sarah, close the key, will you? You're pulling all the juice out of the line. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, Will, listen, did you marry a fella named Daniel Plout this morning? Uh, thanks, Will. <laughs> well, I, uh, I guess congratulations are in order. Kate, is it true? <laughs> <laughs> Kate, you want another whack at these smelling songs? No, thanks. I'm fine. <laughs> Kate, I don't know what you're crying about. Dan's a fine boy. He and Billy will be real happy. It's all my fault. I drove those kids into running away. If Selma and I made up sooner, Billy Joe could have been married formal here in the lobby. I always dreamed of her coming down those stairs wearing her wedding gown. Ah! But Kate, you still got two other girls that are eligible for a lobby wedding. Hi, Mom. Hi, Uncle Joe. Betty Joe, where have you been? To a wedding. Boy, am I starved. Where's Billy Joe? Coming up the path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uncle Joe, do I do I look all right? Hi, Mom. Have you got a room for a honeymoon couple? My baby. Congratulations, Dan. Thank you. My son. Oh. Mom, Mom, uh, there's something you ought to know. Uh, we're not married. What? <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, may I present my wife? Emily Lawrence. Emily Plout. Mrs. Dan Plout. Show him your ring, honey. Yeah, but, but but I thought you and Dan... That's what you and everyone else were supposed to think. I've been helping Dan plot this elopement for weeks. Didn't fool me for a minute. <laughs> you see, if my mother had known I was going to marry Emily, she would have stopped it. Emily's mother and mine have been fighting for years. Oh, your mother fights with everybody. She is with Kate. Me. I made up with her. Uh, can we sign the register now? Uh, Uncle Joe. <laughs> What's the matter? I just got used to the idea of you being married, and now you had to go and disappoint me. This has been a Filmways presentation.